Welcome back everybody to Excel HQ. Today we are going to be learning the X lookup function and why it is the best lookup function to use in Excel and possibly one of the most utilized Excel functions there is. It is an improved version of VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, INDEX MATCH. It is better than all three of those. If you do not know what those are because you are newer to Excel, that's okay because if you know XLOOKUP, you don't really need to know the other ones. Now, let's get right into it. The first example I have here is a table with material number and country of origin. Now, say I want to look up the country of origin for whichever material number I choose. For this, you use XLOOKUP. So right here, you'll want to type in XLOOKUP, open up that bracket, and then the first prompt you'll receive is your lookup value. Your lookup value will be the material number you are wanting to find in your range. So for me, it would be 26590. After that, the next prompt you get is your lookup array. That includes the array that you will find your material number in. It will search through every single number until it finds it. So my array would be from B3 all the way down. Now, after that, you will put in your return array. The return array is the matching side of the material number. So if it was 10099, it would be Canada, and so on. And since I want the country of origin, I will highlight the complete column of my country of origin. Now, there are a few more prompts back here, if not found, match model and search model. We will go over those later, but for now, the only ones that you absolutely need in your XLOOKUP function is your lookup value, lookup array, and return array. So you'll want to close it off with a bracket, and I should receive my country of origin. And my country of origin for this material number happens to be Japan. Now, let's go back and review those other prompts that we had earlier. So, the if not found prompt, match mode, and search mode are all optional. So if you don't want to fill them in, you don't have to. What the if not found does is instead of returning in hashtag and A, if the value does not exist, you can specify what you wanted to say. So in quotations here, I could put does not exist. And that would be my if not found value. So if I change this material number from 26590 to 27590, instead of receiving an NA, I would get does not exist. Now, the match mode prompt here you can either enter a 0, negative 1, 1, or 2. What the 0 does is it looks for the exact number. So if 27590 does not exist, it will tell you it does not exist. Now if I plug in negative 1 here, it will go to the next smallest value of 27590. So say 27560 does exist and it's the smallest next value under it, it would return that. And the same thing for the one here, except it goes upwards. If 28000 did exist and it was the biggest next value, it would then return that. So you'll always get something when you put a negative one or one. Now these wild cards, I will explain these in another video, but just for some basic information, they allow you to not know exactly what you're looking up, but get a sense of it. So for example, you can use the asterisk or question mark. These are both wildcard examples and then you can include them in your lookup value so say we had a list of names and you only knew the last name of a person however the full name was in the cell using wildcards you would be able to look up just the last name and it would and it would identify which cell it's in even though it's not an exact match in this case i'm just going to enter zero however and now for the last prompt would be search mode this is just the way it is going to search it. Search first to last, last to first, where I want it to start up. I have 1,000 columns of information here, and this would help for much, much larger tables where runtime actually does matter. And if you know that what you're looking for is lower down, you could start searching at the bottom instead of the top. And the same thing goes for binary search, except what you're searching has to be in some kind of order. So right now I'm in ascending order, so I'm going up as I, as I go down. 
so I could use the two binary search. But once again, search times don't really matter unless your tables are really, really huge. So I'm just going to take that out there. And that is the XLOOKUP function and all the prompts about it. Now, another great feature about XLOOKUP that previous lookups didn't have is the ability to return more than one value at a time. And what I mean by this is that using one XLOOKUP function, it will fill in both of these cells of the country of origin and the quantity. So for example, if I wanted to find the country of origin and quantity for material number 10212, I will type in XLOOKUP, select my lookup value, and then the lookup array, and then my return array. And in this case, I'm going to highlight both columns of the COO and the quantity, back up, and then I don't need anything else. And it will give me China with 7,159. And we can check that is right as I chose a material number very up close to the top, China 7159. And that is how you return multiple values using XLOOKUP. One last great feature about the XLOOKUP function is that you can actually have more than one lookup value in the beginning for a return value. And what I mean by that is that I can look up the material number and say the year of the quantity in the same XLOOKUP function by nesting one into the other. And I'll show you how. So with my XLOOKUP function, you're going to start with your first lookup value, which would be my material number in this case, and then my lookup array would be all the material numbers that there are. And then for the return array, unlike in previous examples where we picked another column, this time we are going to insert our next lookup function into it, and then the lookup value for that second X lookup, which in this case would be 2022. Now the lookup array, I would choose all of the years for this. And then the return value, instead of nesting another X lookup, this is where the final value we're going to get is going to be. So it will be somewhere in this table of all the quantities over all of the years. I'll close off that function and we will get 5,465 for our quantity. And that is how you use multiple lookup values with XLOOKUP. If you've reached the end of this guide, congratulations, you now have all the skills needed to be a pro with XLOOKUP. If you wanna become a pro at all things Excel, be sure to check out some of my other videos and make sure to subscribe. If there's anything else you want me to cover in a future video, don't be afraid to leave a comment down below.